God's presence. Go ahead and put those hands together for Jesus. To God alone, to Him alone, to Him alone, to Him alone. And have your beautiful seats in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of God Almighty. I want to thank God for this privilege to bring the word to us in a few minutes. And I want to thank Pastor presently in Israel for this great um, privilege. Amen. So the theme for the month of September, by the way, it's the first Sunday in the month of September. Can we give God praise one more time and thank him? God is faithful. The theme for this month is husband man. Husband man. Amen. But the topic for today is no venture, no gain. Somebody say no venture, no gain. I can hear you speaking loud. It's no venture, no gain. No venture, no gain. The text is taken from John chapter 15, verse 16. John 15, 16. I'm going to take the King James Version and then the Message Version. The King James Version says, Ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father, in my name, he may give it you. The message version says, you didn't choose me. Like a Nigerian, so you didn't choose me. Oh. <laughs> you didn't choose me. Remember, I chose you. And put you in the world to bear fruit. Fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me he gives you praise the name of jesus we're going to have a slogan this one when i say no venture you say no gain so no venture i can hear you no venture so what does it mean to venture it means to dare to do something or go somewhere that may be dangerous or unpleasant other meanings are to travel to journey, to go, to move, to proceed, to progress, to set out, to set forth, and to migrate. No venture. So what then is the meaning of no venture, no gain? It means if you won't take a chance, you can't expect to achieve anything. As I'm reading this, I'm also talking to myself. It also means if one takes no risk, one will not gain any benefit. It says you will never reap if you fail to sow. Now listen, until you activate the button that will take you to the next phase, you will always remain at the same spot. Pastor once shared the story of how he was in a lift and um, he was going to the 10th floor, I guess, but he kept on pressing the button of one. So he remained there. So until you activate the button that will take you to the next phase, you will always remain at the same spot. So no venture. No venture. Now, the button to the next phase at times may come with a risk. That button that you need to activate to the next phase at times may come with a risk. Now, according to Hudson Taylor, a British missionary, he said, unless there is an element of risk in our exploits for God, there is no need for faith. Except unless there's an element of risk in our exploits for God, there's no need for faith. Now, of course, we all know Newton's first law that says that every object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change its state by the action of an external force. In other words, there's a tendency to either be stagnant or maintain a routine except you take the risk of change. Like I said, as I'm talking to you, I'm also talking to myself. I see my life reflecting in all of this. No venture. Whenever you get used to your comfort zone, 
Your zone becomes a wall that stops you from seeing the beauty of the next face. When you are so comfortable with your comfort zone, that zone becomes a wall. It stops you from seeing the beauty of the next face. Praise the name of Jesus. Now I looked at my life in the past and discovered that I was always me, Tundi, I was always afraid of venturing into the next phase. I'll try to make this as short as possible. I was um, four years old when I left my parents. My dad and mom needed to go back to school. So they sent me to a place in Nigeria called Sokoto State. Those you may not know, but it's a far, far, far northern part of Nigeria. So from age four, in Sokoto State, I had my nursery school, my primary school, and my secondary school. But the woman who raised me, my, who was more like my dad's elder sister, she made me live a triangular life from school to church, and then we were back home. But she did something for me in life that I will never forget. From the age of six, she enrolled me into the junior choir. It was an Anglican church. You know, all these Orthodox churches, they are very well organized and stuff. So I was enrolled into the junior choir. From the junior choir, I, I graduated into the no, children's choir to the junior choir. From the junior choir, they said, oh, this boy is so talented. They moved me to the senior choir. As a, as a matter of fact, in the Anglican church then, in the choir, I was, I was more like <laughs> the smallest there. But when I got to the senior choir in Agri Country, I said, no, I want to go back to, I want to go back to that junior choir. They said, no, chairman, you have come to stay. I begged, please, I want to go back. They said, no, you have come. So I was in Sokoto for close to about 20 years or thereabout. As a matter of fact, I learned how to speak Yoruba. I, could, I can hardly make an English statement without putting Hausa in it. That was how... <laughs> How good I was. You know, for someone to sit right where I and make credit in Hausa, then you know that. It's not a joke. So, in 1995, 96, when I left Sokoto State, now I didn't understand what she was doing in my life then. I went back to my parents in Lokoja. So, I joined a band. While in Lokoja, do you know I was still thinking about Sokoto? That I. I was begging my dad and mom, please, I want to go back. I begged this. They're like, what is this? Thing? I said, please, I just want to go back. Just simply because of the friends I had. I said, please, I want to go back. I wasn't ready for the next phase. No venture. No venture. I wasn't ready to go back. I begged, please, let me. My dad said, no, you're staying here. So I joined the band. And it became very interesting. In a few years, the band made me their music director. So, and in about two years, I got an admission to study electrical engineering in um, Federal Polytechnic in Kaduna. So, <laughs> when I moved to school in Kaduna, I was still thinking about that band in Lokota. Can you see there's a problem here? I was, I kept on thinking about any short holiday there in Kaduna, boom, I'm back to Lokota simply because of that band. And as God will have it, after my ND, I went back to the same Cat Poly for my HND in electrical engineering. And um, they knew that this boy was just always moving around. So they made me the music director of Kaduna Polytechnic, the entire campus in Kaduna. And those of us who are used to Kaduna, they have different campuses in different the science, the engineering. But I was now heading the entire campus. So I couldn't travel anymore. I'm like, ha, huh, how do I escape? How do I go back to this local job? So I said, okay, I just looked at, okay, two years, two years became three, four due to us to strike. God will help Nigeria in Jesus' name. So I was right there, I'm like, okay, I need to go back. Before I knew it was time to graduate. So I said, finally, I know they will post me to Kogi State. What a, what a dream. What a dream. I'm not saying my state is not a good state, but what a dream. I was just praying, I want to go back to Kogi State just because of the band in Nokoja. So by the time my friends went to look at the board to see where they were posted to, everybody was so excited. 
They didn't tell me I was supposed to. So in my calculation, it's either Kogi State or Abuja. Abuja is just two hours from Lokoja. So I was just going to Abuja and I'm back. By that time, I saw my posting. They posted me to, past, to Pastor Wana's village, Akwaibong. He was, they catapulted me. When I resumed, I was still encouraging myself. I said, when I get to a cry bomb, somebody told me that when you sign up as a youth copper, just sign the first three days and go back. Or even ask them to reject you or something. I said, oh, that's a good plan. So I left. I was so excited. Now, God in all of this knew what he was doing. When I got to camp, you know, this NCCF, Nigerian Christian Coppers Fellowship, will always come to um, the camp for the first one week and just to do fellowship with you. So I said, oh, let me just while away time here. I went the first day. I think I probably played the piano and left the second day. And those of you who are used to their system, when they come, their plan is not just to fellowship. It's to elect leaders that will take over from them when they are leaving. So they kept on listing names after every day they will call names that okay the names are so, so please wait we need to see you the day i heard my name i said no way so i stopped going to the fellowship bio is not here today bio is in the choir he's a witness we serve together in a choir book. so i said no way i stopped going whenever i go i'll quickly play before they close i'm gone so everybody in the camp like who is this twin day they are looking for you but you know what one of the boys then in Catpoli that used to mock us whenever we we're going to FCS, that's Fellowship of Christian Students, saw me in camp and said, ah, you, you are here. He went to tell the NCCF schools that these boys were one of those who used to disturb us in school. This guy is good. So they called and begged and begged. I said I wasn't interested. My mind was, let me get out of camp. Whenever they push me to wherever they want, I will sign and I'm going back. To Lokota. What a dream. No venture. So, all that kept on happening. So, the day I decided that what is even this interview thing, let me even go. All the escorts, when they knew I was coming, all of them gathered. Wanted to be part of the interview. They said, Oh, oh. Mr. Man, um, are you, they said, What do you play? I said, I play a little of drums. So, what, but we saw you playing trumpet. I said, Yes. You played piano too. I said, Yeah. Are you from CNS? I said, ah, which one is CNS? I said, I'm not CNS. So that was how they made me music director at Quaibom State chapter. I said, what is this thing? My friend Bio then was, I think, music director in 89, one of the local governments. So I said, no, this is, this is just too much. Even while I became the music director in Quaibom State, all the other local governments were reporting to me. My, my, I kept on telling, they called the head of the whatever, Ete, in Akwaibom, said that's the, wherever is the president. So, but for Akwaibom in the street is Ete. I said, please, this thing, do I have to do it? Because there's somewhere I need to backslide to. There's somewhere I need to go back to. I said, no, this one, you have come to stay. So, that kept on. I looked at, okay, it's not just one year. Okay. By the time it was time to graduate, I said, thank God. This is Finally, I'm going back. Then a friend met me, a very good friend. He met me and said, Tunde, please, can you follow me to Portacourt? I just need you to help our choir for like three months. Then you can go back to Lokoja. That's three months, right? Three months, no problem. <laughs> I followed him to Portacourt. In the church, they made me music director. My mind was, she be just three months. Before I knew it, I was training like three, four redeemed churches in Podakot. In St. Podakot, I met my wife. So, I was no longer thinking of Lokoja, but Lok, the Oja, was gone. So, and things went on like that. I even changed church. Lord have mercy. I left that Olive Parish where I was to another church just so that I can hide. The pastor then, Pastor Derin Shoetri, made me the music director of the church. I said, what is all of this? So in 2009, I said, okay, I was tired of this music thing. I actually want to study. I want to do something that has to do with the course I studied in school. 
electrical engineering. So I said, I left Port Accord for Lagos. I was in Lagos. <laughs> I got to, so before then I had gone, been to Lagos, to a church, Pastor Nike, a sister Nike at the Amos Church, Goshen. The first time I got to that church, I said, wow, see, there are a lot of people in this church. If you release one album here, man. So by the time I came back, the pastor who was there, Pastor Kola Fashola, who was Pastor Badu's friend, had left the church. They transferred himself somewhere else. So I was in that church. My sister-in-law said, ah, please, let's just see how we can do things together in this church. I said, that's fine. But I knew that I was in the right place. I left that church to place of enlargement. They were there in a hotel, a small room, and there were like five, six, seven of them. And my sister-in-law asked me, I could never forget, are you sure about this? How will you leave a big church and come to this church? And on the 5th of December, 2010, they had a praise night. Sorry, a Sunday Thanksgiving praise. Pastor Badu came for that meeting. Femi Mecca, we were all in, Loko, in, in, in what's it called? See, I'm even still mentioning Lokoja. We're all in Lagos then. I said, no, I want to remain in this church. She said, no, don't stay here. Maybe you should come another time. You are not sure about it. I said, no, I want to stay here. Things happened. And we just, I remained in that church. We moved to another building. Pastor Badu, whenever he was in Nigeria, he would be in our church. And this is me here today. No venture. No venture. You may never experience the opportunities and blessings in other places or things until you take a risk. The gifts of God deposited in you remains a raw material until it is harnessed and fanned to flame. Many of us here are talented. There's something God has put in you. There's something. Some of us, maybe it's just you only need to stay by the door and the entrance door. Somebody just needs to see the way you smile. People say, I'm always frowning. I'm always in a hurry. Maybe for some of you, you're so talented that Somebody just needs to see your face and the person is just filled with joy. There's something you are created for. Some of us are so scared of taking risks, even in our businesses. Amen. So then if you understand no venture, no gain. Listen to this. Acts 16, 25 to 34, it says, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoner had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm. How do you imagine Paul in prison after they had prayed? There was an earthquake. It was time for them to go, but they remained there. In order to gain more souls for the kingdom, Paul and Silas took the risk of remaining in the prison after the earthquake that should have been their freedom. They won the souls of the prison keeper and his, and his entire household for God. No venture. Second Kings 7, 3-4. Now there were four men with leprosy sitting at the entrance of the city gates. Why should we sit here waiting to die? They asked each other. We will starve if we stay here. But with the famine in the city, we will starve if we go back there. So we might as well go out and surrender to the Arabian army. If they let us live, so much the better. If they kill us, we'll have died anyway. You all know the story. They advanced. They saw that there was so much. They even had to bring in people. I told you that there are times you have to take a risk with this. Just imagine for once. That Pastor E. Adiboye said he won't be the geo of Redeem. He wants to go after his master's in degrees, and sorry, in his degrees in mathematics and stuff. See, do you see how many lives he leads to Christ every first Friday of the month? The reason we are also all gathered here is because somebody, Pastor Badu, let go his good paid job to go into ministry. So, in life, in business, in everything that we do, there's a risk to take. 
If Naaman had not taken the risk of going to wash himself in the river as instructed by the prophet, he would have remained a leprous man. So what is that talent God has deposited in you that you are afraid to put to use? Like I told you, I studied electrical engineering, but I can't even remember most things about it anymore. It's music, and that's not passion. And I tell my boys, kingdom boys, those in the orchestra, I say, look, I know most of you will become medical things and this and that, but you don't even know. Cast your bread upon waters. You don't know which one. In summary, this is very important. Even in venturing, do not do it blindly. Don't venture out of jealousy. Don't venture out of envy. Don't venture because you want to impress. Don't venture so that you can be praised. Don't venture for recognition. Don't venture because you are angry, you're upset. Pastor Namdi was preaching on Tuesday that some people just say, oh, I'm leaving this church because they talk to you. Don't venture because you're upset. Venture because it is a must-do and because it will glorify God. If you venture for selfish reasons, instead of gain, it will be lost. And that will not be a portion in Jesus' name. I knew right from time. See, I had somebody, I had the opportunity of someone who wanted to sponsor me that, man, this boy, you are talented. I'm going to make sure you go this. In Lagos State, he called all the FM. He knew most of them. He called them, even organized a concert, spent millions. I, I was dragging my feet. But I knew that this is not me. This is not me. There's nothing wrong with it. This is not me going from ministering from one state to the other. I have a ministry of raising children. That's me. So I told him, sir, this is not, he's late now. I told him, this is, this is not me. Please, this is not me. So don't say, because somebody's doing this, you want to venture into this. And that's what we always do. But let me tell you, there's a risk to take just for anything. No venture. No again. Can we rise on our feet? Just go ahead. I don't know that thing. I don't know what that thing is in your heart. That you know that you need to do this. That this is, it's the time for this. We are just still thinking, should I do this? Should I not? Just commit that thing before God. See, God looks at the intent of your heart. He sees your heart. He knows why. That's one question I always like to ask myself. Why am I doing this? Will God be glorified in this? 